So I found this at a Goodwill in McMinnville, Oregon, and it looks like it's an almost pristine shape. It's an old CB radio. Can you see that? This was marketed. It had the original box, which looked like the whole thing was put into, um, you know, storage the minute they got it, and it hasn't really been used. But it was being marketed specifically on the box by uh, to women in case their car broke down. You know, you're in the middle of nowhere. This is an old CB radio in it. If you know anything about CB radio, it works on the AM radio band. I just hooked up the uh, the antenna here. And it's designed to just sort of plug into your car's old cigarette lighter. We now call it the cell phone charger. And that goes into, I believe it's right here if I'm not mistaken. Now, in order to power it, you have this bad boy, which plugs into your car's cigarette lighter, like I said. Um, mine actually doesn't work, believe it or not, in the old Gas Monster 3000. Ah, uh, there we go. But it's hard to do this with uh, and keep it in frame. But I do have a, uh, I do have one here on my Lion Cub Energy Go. This is one of the few things on this piece of junk that actually works. So, uh, so I've never really had a chance to test this thing. So I'm going to uh, hook this thing up. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to power it up and we're going to test it right here and see if it works. We're right next to the highway. So I'm standing here watching truckers go by, logging trucks, uh, you know, non-logging trucks, all different kinds of trucks. And let's see if I can actually reach somebody. And this is my goal. I've got the power source plugged into here. Uh, according to this, it's fully charged, and it's plugged into the actual radio, which is this thing right here. And then that's the antenna right there. It's actually got a magnet on it. You're supposed to be able to fix it to the top of your car. At least that's what the picture showed on the box. So let's turn this on, and let's figure out how to turn it on first. All right, so the power button is actually this switch, which is also the volume switch. So we're going to turn that up to maximum. This is squelch. Don't ask me what that does. Uh, channel. Uh, oh, it's hard to see the sunlight. That's channel two. There's one that's specific for RV users, but uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head what that is. I'll look in the book right now and see if it's in here. All right, so it According says- to Wikipedia, channel 19 is the most commonly used channel by truck drivers on highways, to the point that some radios even have a dedicated button to bring up channel 19 instantly. In most areas of the U.S., other channels regionally used for this purpose include 10, 17, and 21. So let's go to 19 just to see if we can hear something. You can't really tell. We're, I'm in direct sunlight, so it's really difficult to see this on the camera. But I am now going to 19. That's 17. All right, so now we're on 19. All right, so obviously it gets power. That's a good sign. The antenna, I'm hopefully, is working. Let's uh, push the button and let's see if we hear anything. Now, hang on one second. Hello, test, test, test. Can anybody hear me? I am testing my CB radio. So, uh, CB radios work on work on an AM frequency, like an AM radio, like you do in your car. Whereas a ham radio works on FM frequency, again, like you do in your car, but it's all dedicated just to, for people to use. CB radio, unlike ham radio, ham radio is regulated. You have to have a license to do it. You have to agree to the rules. A, this is AM, which means the CB radio is like anarchy. You can do and say whatever you want. So let's see if we can get anyone to respond to us. Test, test, test. This is Dave testing his new CB radio. I am testing it. Can anybody hear me? All right. I'll have to figure out what the squelch means because I honestly don't know. This thing has a, uh, if you look at the bottom, looks like a battery there. It had a, it was, there was an optional battery pack you could buy, which knowing the batteries in the 1970s, it probably lasted all of all of five minutes. I think somebody was trying to, somebody was trying to respond to me, but I just can't pick it up. 
it may be a distance issue. These things have a distance of about three to five miles. This one is not, I'm imagining, very strong. Um, the ones that are dedicated into your house, which I have one, but I have yet to get that one working because I need an antenna. Um, I doubt uh, I could get it working well, but let's try again. Testing, testing, testing. This is Dave testing a CB radio. Can anybody hear me? Over. So, this is uh, riveting stuff. This is good TV. <laughs> but like I said, I paid 20 bucks for this at a, at a Goodwill in McMinnville, Oregon. And it's uh, a cute little toy to play with. I doubt that I'll uh, need it in an emergency. Yeah, I think someone's trying to get in touch with me. Okay, so the marine and uh, RV use is channel 10. So I'm going to go to channel 10, which you can't really see. Again, direct sunlight, gotta love it. Um, and let's give it a try. To the squelch up. Testing, testing, testing. This is Dave with his CB radio. I am testing my CB radio to see if it works. Can anybody hear me? Over. All right, so channel 10 is used, again, for RVers or marine use. It was really funny. I was sitting here. I had paused the camera for a moment. And uh, my daughter, we got these walkie-talkies. My daughter was, uh, she's in the RV, and she messaged me real quick. I hear this voice, and all I think of is, oh, my goodness. Someone's talking to me over the CB radio, and it's nice and clear. <laughs> These uh, walkie-talkies, uh, what is that, Cobra Micro Talk 2? I got two of them for, I think it was five bucks a pop at a, oh no, I'm sorry, yeah, five bucks a pop, because there's the price. Five bucks a pop at a uh, second-hand shop in Portland, and they work great. I got a couple of uh, rechargeable batteries in this one, rechargeable batteries in the other one, and... Now my daughter and I are, uh, can walk across the entire campsite and we're in constant communication with each other. Not that we think that, uh, you know, there's going to be any trouble, but <laughs> there she is waving. But anyway, let me try one more time on the RVers. Testing, testing, can anybody hear me? I am testing my CB radio. Can anybody hear me? Over. I don't think that a lot of our viewers are, are on a CB right now. Um, I would think it would still mostly be used by truckers or people who uh, make a living on the road. Even then, I know a lot of truckers have switched to ham, ham radio, those who've gotten licensed, but still, it's good to have something. And I kind of want to see if this bad boy works or not. Let's try channel 13. One, two, three. Let's try channel 13, then we'll, then we'll just call it quits because I'm assuming nobody's using this. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I am testing my new, excuse me, my new to me, CB radio, seeing if this works. Is anybody hearing me? Over. Ah, fun times. And we'll give it about a good 60 seconds and we'll be done. So what's really funny is the, the $5 walkie talkies was certainly the best, uh, one of the best buys I got. But the CB radio, I couldn't turn it down. I mean, gosh, it was vintage. It was a beautiful, it's a beautiful shape. Look at it. It looks like they used it three or four times and it's been sitting in a garage and Grandpa probably died, and that's, uh, it probably ended up there, so I just stumbled upon it by accident. And here we are. Well, it doesn't look like I'm getting much of a reaction to this, so I guess we'll call it good.